Episode nine of Let's Play the Tutorial Fortress of uh, of Dwarf Fortress, and I was in the middle of doing some in between session stuff, stuff you'd all seen before. I was moving the uh, the beehives to the outer courtyard, and I was letting the miners make some progress before expanding the tree farm. And the Way Hyena Child has shown up, so the Way Hyena Child. Mucka Ithraclide has come, a large hyena twisted into humanoid form. It is crazed for blood and flesh. Its eyes glow mahogany. Its dark brown hair is long and shaggy. Now you will know why you fear the night. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is the trusty M A. I'm going to activate the first burrow. Apparently, there's a petition available. You want to fight monsters? You are in the place. So we've activated our burrow. Let's check where this were creature is. Follow. So, we're on pause now. As long as this guy doesn't get wind of us. Oh, he fell into the moat. This is exactly what we did. It's working. It's working. Oh, never mind. So, we're now going to have squads A and B kill from list. Oh, not the ghostly militiaman. Although we have another militiaman, apparently. We're going to go for that um, were hyena. Now then, who is it fighting? The animal caretaker Solon. We're going to have to remember this. He's been bitten. That means he's infected. So I'm hoping, actually, that the um, were hyena kills him before we get there. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Okay, this guy is definitely infected. We're going to have to do something about that. But first up... We're going to check the were hyena. We now need to see if it's managed to hit anyone except the animal caretaker. So we're just coming down, coming down. So far it's all the animal caretaker. So this is where the military starts to arrive. And we're just scanning through here. The, the, the animal caretaker is 100% infected. So we're going to show you how to deal with that. And then it looks like once the military gets here, it's just... Um... Oh, wow, one of the military actually bit the wear hyena in the upper leg. And sh <laughs> Oh no, the, the wear hyena broke out. I thought the kid had... Yeah, so there's just another a couple of pages, and then it finishes off with uh, one of the silver warhammers jamming the skull through his brain. So, how do we deal with this infection? Well, let's take a look at this animal caretaker. Let's actually um, view him. Let's look at his... his uh, actually, we're going to leave this... Um... Okay, so we can still walk, so we're going to end the military alert. That's not going to help us now. He's alive, he's infected, we're going to have to deal with it. And how do we do that? Well, what we're going to do, we're going to go to military. Oh, we can't do that either. Hmm. We, we could make him a militia captain. And then, um... Give him essentially an air quote squad of just him. And then we basically have to station him somewhere. And lock him in the room. So we've got more, more petitions for people wanting to fight monsters, and they're obviously in the right place. Like I said, we did take apart all of the hives and start um, rebuilding them out here, and I did find when we did that, quite a few jugs. So I'm thinking maybe the, uh, the lost item that they kept looking for might have been actually hidden in one of the hives or under it from uh, one of the previous guys. So let's go down to the hospital here. We can see this guy. I'm hoping that he uh, dies in his treatment. If we look at um, let's press Z, let's go to health, and we'll just look down till we find Solomon. Is that's not him? Nope. We should see quite a few um, notes on Solomon. There he is. So he can't stand and he can't grasp, 
severe damage. He's got cuts all over. So the the um, medikai, the medical dwarves, looks like they're already seeing to him. Or at least somebody should be, because we have the automatic labors turned on. But I think what we might do... How are the miners doing? Okay, it's going to be a while for them to be done. So we're going to do a high priority mining project up here. So we're going to use the minus key on the numpad to set this to highest priority. And we are going to dig out a little isolation chamber down here. This is going to be our quarantine room. This is where we're going to lock dwarves who... Um, are probably infected. Actually, no, this is a terrible plan. Because if he's infected, he can break through doors. Hmm. Well, it should take him a while to break through doors. And we don't actually know for certain that he is going to turn, or even... Lead almond egg. Why is lead almond egg not, um... Oh, well, yeah, we just straight up don't have enough uh, burial room. Okay, so we're going to put this on to two. And we're now going to extend just out this way. We'll extend each wing as necessary. Now, we're probably... Are we going to use this quarantine room? I, I don't know. I don't know if his injuries will carry over to him being a werebeast. I'm going to be honest. I've never seen someone survive a werebeast attack like that before. They've always just straight up died. Now, the guy can't walk. And we, we did... Um, I, I think we ended up making some splints and crutches. We're going to order a few now, just to be safe. But we're definitely going to, um... Quarantine this guy. In that room, and he'll either... Not turn. Or he will. And that's, that's basically where we're at. I don't want to just execute him. Because I could probably manipulate the game in such a way as to have him, you know, I could I could manipulate the game in a way to have him killed in some way or another. I could send him solo wandering off down into the caves. There is a bunch of stuff I could do to basically make sure this guy never sees the light of day. But what we're going to do is lock him in a quarantine room. So we're going to put a bed in there, we're going to put a table, we are going to put a chair, and we're going to make a stockpile of food. Now there won't be much in here. There's going to be two individual stockpiles, and we're going to change the settings on one to basically... Where is... where's drink? Is drink a separate stockpile? I don't believe it is. Ah, drink, there we are. So we're going to... Um, One of these stockpiles is going to be for drink. And then the one above it is... Keep pressing D instead of F. One of these stockpiles is going to be for food. And then when we get chance, we might use the... Um, We might use the militia command to get him stuck in there, but we're going to lock this dude in here with a little bit of food and see if he turns. If he does, we'll send our uh, dwarves down. And we'll just uh, stab him to death in there with our cool military dwarves. Shouldn't take us too long to assemble the, uh, the quarantine room there, and then we just have to put him in there. 
Now it looks like this guy picked up a couple of skills while he was out there. But like I said, I don't know to what extent his injuries will carry over to his waveform. But if we lock him in that room... With, why is that just a... Oh yeah. yeah, if we lock him in that room with just a little bit of food and drink... Then we should be okay. But to do that, we need him to be able to move at least a little bit. And it looks like right now... Yeah, he's just... Apparently this carpenter feels like a pretty decent uh, medic. Gonna be honest folks, I'm not 100% sure what my plan is here. The guy can't walk. What was his name? Solon. Let's take a look at Solon. He's on rest currently. How's his health? He can't stand and he can't lap. He's got severe damage. He's torn open up and down. He needs the traction bench, and he's just... I don't know how infection entirely works. I don't know if it's a surefire thing, or if uh, this guy has a chance of still being a dwarf. But realistically, we just we can't keep this guy in the fort, so what we're going to do... We're going to make a new militia captain. We're going to find Solon. And we're going to use this as a way to direct him around. To basically tell him... That his current role in the fort is to be locked away. That's if we can find him on this list. Because I am terrible at this and I've probably skipped over him. I'm sure someone else will have seen him. But uh, there he is. Solon. So we're going to go to military create squad. And then we're going to look for Solon through here. Oh no. The create squad. No uniform. The metal mortal doors, which is just going to be uh, like I say, this, this isn't actually going to be a squad. As soon as we've locked Solon away, we're going to remove him from this position. So we're going to go to squad C, move, and we're going to lock him in there. It looks like he's actually incapable of even getting in that room. So right now, even that won't work. Uh, someone's seeking an infant. So we just had a child born. That's pretty nice. Uh, as you can see, plenty of blood and everything else out here. That is A-OK. -okay. The bridge is allowing us access to pretty much everywhere on the map, which is pretty dope. Pretty pleased with that. There's the original beasts and the second one we killed. The first one we killed in um, dwarf form. This one we actually managed to get in, in beast form and tearing to pieces once the military got in there which is even more impressive when uh, you remember they didn't actually have any equipment when they did that looks like the stockpiles are full so we're actually going to um, order another one another 20 by 10 just mass stockpile we'll add in just a couple of uh, doorways there I'm guessing our miners are still busy down here or possibly extending the oh Okay, good few. Extending the other place. So we've got all that there. That's um Have these been built? No, they haven't. Why aren't these suspended? Ah, they must have been maybe fighting over who got the stuff. Oh no, it was a forbidden area, so they suspended remaking these. Well, that's fine, we can unsuspend them, I guess. Let the rest of those be built. Do we have any more coffins? <clears throat> we do. Now let's hope that we still have the remains of that military dwarf and we can throw him in a coffin. Because it would suck for that to, uh, that ghost to start removing people's limbs. Go check the admin level again. Yeah, the guy is still incapable of moving. And somebody is apparently taking a nap in the quarantine. I thought we had enough bedrooms for everyone. Have these all been claimed? They have. So we're going to have to... Um... Yeah, we're going to have to... Extend the bedroom area as well. 
go check on the caves. I don't believe anything much will have happened down here for now. You know, we could do with some more miners. It's a shame we don't have a metal that will allow us to increase the amount of, uh... picks we have, so that we could get through this quicker. But our miners just have a lot on their plates right now. So we might have to just keep an eye out on the uh, monsters list here. Make sure that nothing untoward happens with the caves, which now that we have that many explorers down there, I think we'll be fine, to be honest. Let's allow these coffins for burials. And hopefully that'll uh, bury our dude. That's fine, you can not heal that guy. That guy can be permanently uh, immobile and I won't lose any sleep. But now I think it's time we actually finished off our uh, wall up here. We do have a little bit of the floor left to finish. This just continues to uh, be a little bit of a process here until this last piece is done. Looks like the couple of years worth of wait is starting to pass so that our trees are starting to sprout again on the surface. That's good. That means because we have the dual biome, the forest is essentially spreading into our desert area. So all these pieces of grass on the border zone think they're full-blown forest. So now that we've actually come onto the map and the biomes have met and kind of clashed, it should be okay. We're going to actually order the eight top and bottom hives to be un like left alone so they don't get ruined. Which means we should harvest all of the wild hives in conjunction with the eight reserve hives that we have inside to give us a decent supply of honey from these other ones. And then, I'm not sure if these are listed as forbidden. But we're going to claim all this honey too. So that should be good. Someone's obviously uh, gotten cave adaption because they're vomiting on the way up and down the stairs. Oh, and someone is taken by a mood. What are you going to claim? Oh yes. Metalsmith's workshop. I'm really hoping we get an artifact weapon or piece of armor out of this. But it's just as likely to be, you know, a chair or an amulet. Something made of metal. And we have plenty of precious metals from to choose from. Looks like he's gotten a silver bar, maybe. That definitely looked like a bar. I'm not sure if we have any charcoal, though. So actually, what we're going to do, we're going to go to P, Q, make charcoal. We'll order two sets of 25 charcoal burned. I think we did this last time. But we'll, uh, we'll do it again. We don't want... Uh, don't want extract from plants. I don't know what extract does, to be honest. We'll uh, we'll ignore that. And I think uh, to keep some of these idlers busy, along with the automatic stuff there, we're going to go to designate P, and we're just going to harvest all the surface plants again. It gives a multitude of our dwarves a lot of things to do. Hopefully, we'll, yep, that idler just list just dropped significantly. Should be uh, going back for a third thing. What are you taking this time? He's getting gems. I think that uh, fire symbol is an uncut gem. Okay, he's begun his construction. Nice. No more coffins, but has... Uh, we have not put Lib to rest, so we're going to go up to our craft dwarf here. We're going to add a new task. We're going to engrave a memorial slab to Leb and apparently a barn, who both are not. Okay, we've got like a bunch of unmemorialized people there, so we're actually going to um, put now on these. 
meaning that uh, they've been made a top priority. So we'll skip them up the list. I'm interested to see what our dude does. That's fine, you guys can continue to not let the horrible wear creature walk. We'll not hold that against you. We still need to finish off our floor so that we can build our second level of wall. And we'll do that just out of any old uh, you know, our slate. And now we're going to use the same commands, build big C, but wall, and we're going to line out just the corners, I think. Corners, like I say, they can be um, awkward for your dwarves to reach, so I like to do my corners, order them built, and then order the rest of the wall built. It's not always a problem, there's only certain alignments actually give it a problem, but I find it's better to just be safe and sorry. Yeah, better to be safe than sorry, not safe and sorry. And just throw them all down at once. Let your dwarves put the corners on, and then you never have to worry about the rest. It's also not a problem on a ground floor, because you have 360 degree access to a lot of the places. Fishery worker is stumbling, stumbling around obliviously. I think that means he's actually given up on life and will just starve himself to death. That, um, that tantrum spiral is going to be costing us for a few years yet. Okay, so we are engraving those memorial slabs. Apparently the splints will have gotten made, but apparently we just didn't make nearly enough. So with all the stuff that's on the surface, I'm actually going to give this guy an order. We're going to make 20 splints. We won't need as many of those as crutches, and they're not as time- uh, crutches are a lot less time sensitive. You can give a man a crutch three years after he's broken his leg and he'll pick it up and use it. But with a splint, there is a certain time frame after the injury that you need to uh, apply the splint before it's just not effectual anymore because the bone has already jangled itself and caused the extra damage. That is the, the technical term, jangled. So, sorry if you're not uh, up on the medical lingo. That's my little potato farm that you can see. I think I mentioned that in the last episode. Be nice to have an abundance of wood to be able to put that silver to use in uh, making some trade goods so that we can really uh, pile on the pressure. Well, not pile on the pressure, but uh, really get some good stuff off the home world, homeland. You know, I'm okay with it. Dwarves are aliens. You heard it here first. We are going to start building our actual walls now that we have uh, most of the corners done. It's going to take them a long time to do it all anyway, and I don't know if we're going to have enough blocks to do it all in one go. I've seen quite a few of them. But uh, it's going to take a lot to build this wall. Now, like I said the first time, we're only going to go too high with this wall, and we're probably going to dismantle the inner courtyard wall at some point. It's not an urgent thing though, dismantling that wall, so we're probably just going to leave it until we have absolutely nothing to do, just to keep some of the dwarves busy. But uh, keeping them busy isn't normally a problem, it's getting them to do the things you've assigned. Do we have any more bars? Uh, sorry, blocks. Yes we do, we have a lot of schist blocks too, so yeah, we're probably going to have enough to do this. And this wall is of singular purpose, it's just to stop people climbing over the moat. Because not only would they have to climb out of the river, but now they'd have to climb up a uh, two-story sheer surface. Which, I don't know if these um, smoothed walls are even classed as climbable. But if they are, I'm pretty confident that a moat and two levels of wall is enough to stop all but the most determined of invaders from getting across.
There we are. So that's going to take quite a while to build. A bit of a project. Obviously they move quite a lot faster with blocks. Fickard's the captain of the guard. He has been for a while. A human caravan has arrived. A silver mace. Yes. Alright, so. He can claim it as a family heirloom all he likes. That thing is going to our captain of the military. Assuming he's a maceman. I think he's a spearman actually. But let's take a look. We're going to go shift L. And we are going to have a look at this silver mace. The crowded tarnish thags a leg. Uh, we can see there that it's just your standard mace as far as the description is concerned. It doesn't do any more damage than a um, regular mace, but it's just a masterwork quality. So the, your absolute best quality mace will be the same as this. This is a silver mace. All craft warship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with, with baguette cut smoky quartz decorated with jabbera leather and encircled with bands of silver. So I imagine, you know the jabberas that were killing pink things downstairs? He's like, wrap the handle in jabbera leather. He's put two or three extra bands around the head of the mace and encircled them with gems. And then, was that, did it also say spikes? No. So it's just ba circle bands around the head of the mace that have gems in them. The leather wrapped handle, shaft, whatever it is and then uh, gems inside the circle at the top. That's pretty It's pretty rad. It's pretty simple as far as artifacts go. But I quite like the, how that one's turned out. It's not, you know, menacing with spikes of donkey leather because I have seen that more often than I would probably care to admit. But let's take a look at um, our military. Now, the, uh, the humans are actually aren't going to say anything to us. They're just going to update us on world events. Now, Fickard is not uh, useful with the mace at all. There's there's Relic, let's see. I'm fairly sure Relic is, yeah, a legendary spear dwarf. I don't know that I can bring myself to bring him all the way back down to, like, a regular soldier. So, we might not give him that mace. Fickard is a ranged dwarf, so he isn't going to be using it either. So, we might save that for a third... Military guy. Oh, we have a mandate. That was right, Ballista Arrows. Ballista Arrows are a pain to make. They take a new workshop that we don't have. So we're just going to have to uh, allow someone to be beaten probably to death for not doing that. How are these memorial slabs? Okay, these are supposedly done. So we're going to build Alt-S for slab. And we're just going to place down, I think we just made four of them. But we're going to order a bunch of these. Because I don't know which ones are engraved. They normally seem to be okay about bringing down the engraved ones first. But I would rather just uh, bring them all down. And then I can just have them taken away if they're not engraved. And that'll take up the rest of the idler's time anyway. More petitions available. People love coming here to eradicate monsters. Has anyone actually been fighting? Giant cave spider. Oh boy. Where are you? It's on level 37. Now I think we were on 36 or 38. It is very near us, okay. Squads A and B, we're gonna move you. We're gonna bring them all down here. We're gonna wait for them all to be ready and we're going hunting that giant cave spider. These things are terrifying. We might actually lose a dwarf or two here. I have seen legendary dwarves killed by these cave spiders. They have an attack where they will immobilize your dwarves by throwing uh, sticky webs at them. And in general, it's just a bad time having to fight these guys. Oh, Jesus. Okay, no. Squads. A, B. Kill from list. We have to kill our militia captain now because he has just turned into a wear hyena. Hopefully he's still in his bed. This is horrible, horrible timing. 
No. Where is... Oh, jeez. This is not good. He's killing people. Who's he fighting? He's fighting a spear dwarf right now. Okay. It looks like the spear dwarf is actually doing okay. So we're going to continue to advance this in super slow. Yet yeah, the potter is now fighting him. I don't like that. But he is now surrounded on multiple, multiple sides. Human pikemen are stabbing at him. Uh, yeah, it looks like, looks like this is probably going to go well. Oh, jeez. Uh, the peasant punches the militia captain in the left eye with his left hand, and the injured part explodes into gore. Oh. So yeah, it looks like because of where he transformed the, um... Oh, no. Ah, damn. Okay, he's, he's injured other people. I don't know what we're going to do about this. Apparently people have... Oh, I should have activated a bloody alert is what I should have done. Okay, so he bled to death. Some people are now going to be put in... The hospital. We need to make note of who they are. And we need to put them in a squad and send them naked down... Oh, jeez. Someone's webbed as well. Okay, squads. A and B. Kill from list. That cave spider. We're now going to have to go watch that. This is just... Uh, this was brilliant timing. I'd forgotten about our uh, dude. Oh, and it's in a... It's not even in an open area. Which means people are going to get webbed and eaten trying to get to it. So we're following this guy, and uh, as long as we can get at it from more than one side, we should be okay. But if it leads itself into like a really dead-ended tunnel, we're going to have a real tough time with him. Any moment now, we should see our dwarves running at him. And he, he will not be scared. This spider will... Uh, Mess us up. This is nerve-wracking. I'm actually terrified right now. I don't know where our dwarves are. Oh, well, there's the first few. So let's go back to this spider. So here they come. Now it looks like there's two or three ways they can get at them here. There's the webs. There's the giant cave spider just absolutely annihilating some of our dwarves. And I think we might have got him now. I think we've actually surrounded him. Uh, maybe? Let's, let's take a look here. Uh, yep, looks like we got him. We lost one of the armored conjurers and two of the inks of shooting. That kind of blows... But there were probably better ways for me to handle that, but not without um, more time than I really had available. So let's see. These three guys. We need Kubuk, the potter. We need Udib, the peasant. And we need Aaron. Is that... Erosh Moz. Is this a Moz? Is this a Moz Erosh? No, okay. Wait, is it? Irish Mazarims. Okay, I thought for a moment that might have been our, um... You know, our mayor, Erosh. But it's not. We do need to find this Erosh, though. Which is going to be a little bit of a pain in the bum. Scrolling through all of these. Wait, who is that guy and why is he in there? 
So three of our dudes were injured by the wear creature, and as you saw, once you're injured by a wear creature, you become one. So I think what I might do is go for squad C attack. No, uh, squad C kill from list. Uh, go fight those plump helmet men. Can you do that for me, guys? No, they can't move. What else can we really do with them? Well, we could lock the doors. If we didn't already have so many people in there, we could. Ah, there we are. So there's no one in there now. I think what we might do is go to Q here. Oh. I don't know, someone's in there. We need the room to be empty except for the three dwarves themselves. There we are, Q. These guys have had some medical treatment, but we're going to forbid passage into that room, and we're just going to leave them to starve to death. And I think just to be safe, we're actually going to wall up the room until they've turned, starved to death, and uh, we can not have to worry about them anymore. Now that's a bit of an extreme measure, but given that if we don't contain this, we're going to have three more wear beasts on our hands, I think it's the best measure that we have. Because we can't afford to have wear beasts on the way around now. Who did we lose from these squads? We didn't lose Relic or Fickard. We do need somebody else here. I think we will take this Cheesemaker. Etor, congratulations. And the Inks of Shooting, let's go for... Uh, the paper maker and a gelder, why not? I'm sure they're not important. As long as we don't take our nobles away with this new um, program running our recruitment for us, it should be fine, to be honest. And you know what? Eto is replacing things. Let's go to military equipment. Eto, individual choice melee, I think not. You're getting that artifact weapon. So Relic's right hand man who's now considered second in the uh, military at all will become a mace dwarf Kib has become a sword dwarf so that means he might have actually had some uh, training already with the wall construction going on up here it's yeah I think it's just gonna be a while before we wall those guys into the barracks. Uh, sorry, into the the hospital. Now, obviously, once we're done, we will... Look, once they've starved to death and died, we'll unbrick the hospital and bury them. But until then, I don't think that's going to be the case. Okay, so that's not a thing to anyone. And it seems like now we're just going to have to wait on a lot of hauling to be done. Nobody's really idle. But again, it's just the way that this uh, labor thing works. It's going to take a while before anything's done. Oh, one of them is up and about. But we've... Ah, there we are. Someone's been put to rest. But because they're now sealed in that room... They're going to stay in there until one of them loses control, kills the other two. And then that one will starve to death. And I'm not really sure which is worse, being ripped limb from limb while you're helpless in a hospital bed, or staying in a room with the limbs you ripped off someone while you starve to death. But those guys are now locked in. Those walls cannot be destroyed. They can be disassembled by someone with the proper job, which we'll do once these guys are dead. So that's going to suck to be them. It's just flat out gonna suck right, let's, let's stop that removal yeah this one isn't something but lead is now uh, put to rest so that's good we were gonna do a lot of uh, cave exploration this time guys but I think instead what we're going to do is you know deal with a wear hyena outbreak so if I'd have been a little bit more ready to 
throws someone's life away, that might have went a little bit more cleanly. We have a baby llama and a cavy pup starving to death. Let's go to the surface to um, get our, our surface layer here. And I think what we're going to do, we're going to make a second pasture. And this one is just going to be for animals that we plan on slaughtering, that we don't plan on keeping and breeding. So let's have a look at what was actually brought with us in this new wave. We have a stray poults, uh, cavy pup and baby llama. Let's see if there's anything else. Doesn't look like it, really. The rest are all uh, our own animals. And a bunch of adopted pets that we can't slaughter without really annoying people. But those ones that were in the meeting hall will now be brought down and uh, nommed upon. How are we doing on drink? Okay, we do have plenty of drink. And... Yeah, that... That spider. That thing took... Uh, Took a bite out of us. Entirely intended. Was that really a pun? I don't know if that counts as a pun as much as it was just a really terrible joke. So again, we're just going to expand our bedroom area here. Now they have no water source to give drinks because the guys in the room are trying to source a drink for each other. But because we've locked them in there, they're now kind of... Uh, I imagine... Yeah, they're kind of scratching at the walls trying to get out now, realizing what's happened and what fate awaits them. Now, it would be crueler, uh, sorry, it would be much easier to just execute them. Like, we could uh, send them, if we could, something I was considering doing that had occurred to me was that we could make them stand under the drawbridge as it was raised and then lower it onto them and basically just turn them into a dwarven mist. But uh, unfortunately, that was not really an option because they they wouldn't move. We did try and get them to go kill a bunch of plump helmet men, but that wasn't going to work either. We can now just disband squad C. So we're going to go military, the mortal door. I actually, yeah, we're going to disband the mortal doors. As we've just no need for them anymore. Now you can see they're starting to um, clog up the message board with looking for food and other things, food and water for each other. Plenty of people are webbed, but that is, um, there are no more giant spiders, so they're just being webbed in the web that was left over and in the um, smaller spider webs that were down there. That's not too big of an issue. Now that we have enough uh, bars of charcoal, I'm actually going to go into our uh, smith here. We're going to go into other objects. We're going to go into silver. And we're going to have him make silver crafts. And silver goblets. So our blacksmith is now just going to make an absolute ton of silver that we can trade with the homeland. There is, as you can see, an absolute ton of just um, gross stank in... The butcher's shop which is why we've got the doors there to stop the stank spreading uh there's still those three uh those three dwarves getting whatever they're getting well they're just slowly starving to death that is a horrible way to go horrible horrible way to go but it's them or the entire fortress so we choose them they're completely willing an honorable sacrifice will not be forgotten well, we're going to tell them that anyway. We're going through this stone quite quickly. Let's uh, head on down to this cave level and start planning our exploration. Well, we were going to do this time, but uh, I wanted to give the, the new dwarves a little bit of time to sink into their roles. And obviously, we still have a lot of mining to get done. I would like, it looks like we can just walk up some ramps. To make it over to this side. So we are connected over there as well. You can see some of our brez around there. Some some brez. Plenty of plants down here. I'm not seeing... Um, now that these guys have explored a bit. Not seeing the big downward ramps. Into a much deeper cave. 
but it could just be that the the ceiling is stopping us from seeing that so let's see what have these guys explored looks like they've explored most of it actually what's that that's some biscuits and some clothes probably from our dwarves that were horribly horribly murdered obviously we have the lake there so this might actually not have any deep pits in it might have been a bug i don't know we're definitely going to clear out a bit more of an area up here to act as an underground fortress because we're going to make some actual buildings down here and um try and do some some cool stuff down here but for now we have a little entry point and all of our dwarves for the most part are busy so we don't need to make it well we don't have the, the dwarves to make a third squad to go stand down there what's going on with that guy why do you look like two people are you carrying someone's dwarves or someone's remains let's uh, unpause it and see if he yeah he's coming up the stairs so he must have a body but we don't have any more coffins so he's probably just going to go dump that in the corpse stockpile which is obviously entirely unacceptable so we're going to throw down some more coffins that we happen to have when we eventually get around to that One thing I will say for the Dwarf Therapist over Dwarf, uh, this DF Hack Auto Labor is I got a lot more menial tasks completed when I was controlling who did what. You would not find 11 idlers and uh, this wall would be complete a long time ago. I wonder if we can prioritize those coffins somehow in the same that we did... Um, Can we, like, uh, press N to do it now? No. So we can't assign any kind of priority to that, which really kind of blows. Because I would rather get those guys memorialized before they turn into ghosts. Our mining is also going quite slowly. No food available. That's the guys in the, uh... Wait, what was that? Wild animals. Oh, jeez. No, it wasn't the troll. Was it this reacher? No, so these things are still down here. The, um... The cave explorers should deal with those things for us. If not, we can have a military squad come down here and deal with them. That is uh, the basically the entire purpose of those guys being down here. Some of them are even dwarves, which means when they uh, get their limbs ripped off, we can take their armor. We're going to see a lot of alerts about food and people starving pretty soon. We're just going to have to kind of deal with that. Looks like I'm not sure what our miners are up to. maybe uh, hauling stone around for this stuff yeah there they are so I guess at this point we're just playing the waiting game which you will do a lot of in Dwarf Forest I'm hoping to uh... oh we took off that door yeah I'm hoping to show you guys before the end here of this episode the resolution of the Beast saga as you can see people just uh, running around in some pretty uh... oh well we've actually ran out of stone because the miners are taking that long yeah we're in some we're not in the best of shape right now as far as the uh, the fort in general goes but we've definitely seen worse I don't like the amount of troglodytes, trolls and reaches that are down here because they're quite close I think what we might do is mobilize squads A and B, kill from list and we're just going to order the troglodytes put to the sword and we can 
then call the end of the episode. So we're gonna kill from list and to select multiple, what you do is you hold shift and you just go down the list, getting all of the uh, letters there. So we'll order the guys down here. Troglodytes on their own aren't a problem, but with the amount we've just seen there, it's best to just uh, get a get a jump on them and beat their faces in. So with auto labor, the three guys in that room are actually attempting to um, heal each other. Looks like people have stopped making charcoal to throw tantrums, which we're not not over the moon about. But we are going to get to read some cool combat logs before the end here. Now troglodytes aren't massively difficult opponents. They're probably actually being hunted by the guys we have in these caves. Looks like the, the battles might be going on up here. Yeah, they are. The Axe Dwarf Kel is fighting. Let's see, do it. Are any of our named people fighting? We only really have Relic, but he isn't fighting yet. See, how's this troglodyte going? Silver Hammer fracturing the bone, bending the right. So someone just got their arm broken in a multitude of ways. And then... Lots of other... Oh! Their arm was exploded into gore. What's this one? This is Silver Warhammers again. And then smash the head in with a Silver Warhammer. Looks like our... Uh, even with the couple of recruit new rookie members slowing them down, this military is not playing around. I'm hoping to see... You know, our, our two named... Top dog dudes get down here. An elf pikeman. I didn't know we had an elf. Yeah, even even the elves are getting involved. Let's see how's our squads still have something to do. I'm not sure where they're chasing these guys. Looks like across into this section of the. Uh, yeah, that's probably the elf over there. Oh, we have something going on up here. Guessing those guys are still just dancing around each other. Flying silver bolt strikes the troglodyte and it falls over. So that person was just using their crossbow in super close quarters. And then somebody with a silver mace shows up and finishes it off. And then I think we're done. So that's really all there is to combat in Dwarf Orders. You learn a lot from combat that you can't learn from training and sparring. So, every so often, just coming down and eliminating troglodytes like that, or clearing up anything that's close to your base of operations can be quite helpful. And the other thing you can do is to build a bunch of traps. And we are going to trap the ever-loving uh, daylights out of the front of our fort entrance when we get time. I was hoping to have had that done this turn. This turn, this um, episode. Okay, so one of them has just turned into a wear hyena. Oh, two of them did. But it looks like they're still immobile in their beds. Who are you? Kubuk. Okay, Kubuk. Search. Oh we, oh, we can't actually search. Let's go look for Kubuk. Because it could be that Kubuk did not turn like the others did. And if that's the case... The name is Kubuk, isn't it? Yeah. Kubuk mirror paint. Military... I don't know, we need nobles, we need to create... Uh, create them as militia captain. Kubuk. It's a shame there's not like an automated search feature here that we can use to actually put his name in and search for him that way. I'm not seeing him on the list so far though. Where's Kobok? I'm seeing other names that are similar. Maybe if we search him on the uh, this thing, let's Q Cub 
There are no dwarves living here. Uh, is this guy not a citizen? It's definitely Kobuk. Let's look for a second name. All uh, Onal. Yeah, no. Uh, apparently, this guy doesn't live here. Maybe. Maybe he's a visitor of some kind. No. Huh. Well, we can't seem to do anything with him. I was gonna recruit him into the military and tell him to uh, murder those two things, and if he did, we would, you know. What is that that you've left behind on the bed? Oh, it's all of your clothes. Well, those where hyenas are in there now, and now that we know, once they turn back, I think we can actually order them killed. Yeah, we can. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go for A and B, kill from list. The where hyenas, they can't actually get there for now. So what we're going to do is wait for those guys to untransform into their uh, regular humanish looking forms. And then we should be able to go in there and kill them when they're dwarves again. Now I'm not sure if when, if one of them turns, if they'll, do, aha, one of them, they've just turned back into dwarves. So let's see. Squads A and B, kill from list. Can we still kill them? Uh, doesn't look like we can. See, so yeah, I think we might just have to wait for them to starve to death. So we're gonna stand squads A and B down. There's no point risking further infection. We have the situation handled. Oh. We were paused, so it might not have updated. Nope, it's just humans. Because they're citizens, we can't do anything with them. Let's go to uh, J for justice, actually. Uh, Z. Let's go across to justice. Huh. Rith and Atir. Is that these guys? No. So, yeah, we're just going to have to wait for those guys to um, starve to death in that crazy place that we've left them. Or is that Rith there? Yeah, that's Rith. Legendary Spear Dwarf. Rith is still in the military, isn't he? We didn't somehow take him out. Yeah, he's 10th on... Uh, on Relic's squad. What did he do? If we go to Z, we go to Justice. Let's check out what he actually did. Violation of production order. Okay, so because nobody made that Ballista Bolt, Rith has to spend 63 days in prison. There's a good chance that's going to drive him insane. Because he's not going to be happy in there. Now, uh, how are these guys doing? Can we... What are their names again? Their names are Erush and Udib. Let's... U, Q, Erush. Siege Engineer. It's this one. Okay. Can we... Kills. Oh, so it's listed as two murders. Can we, we can't really do anything about it though. So I think you uh, might rejoin me next episode folks, when either we've made progress on the various mining jobs that we've assigned. You may rejoin me when we finish this wall. Or you might rejoin me when it's time to um, go cave exploring. But it looks like for now, there is just a lot of waiting to be done. And it looks like uh, we're still losing dwarves to depression and what have you. So I'm not sure entirely how much longer this fort will last. Hopefully it doesn't just uh, fall to a tantrum spiral. We can hope. Seems like uh, we are making progress up here, though. 
so at some point soon folks i'll see you back here as usual thanks for joining me and i hope to see you in the next one Bye.